Hey everybody, welcome back. This video is going to be an update on the package I just got today from ModMyMods.com. Link will be down in the description. And this is the liquid cooling kit for the Raspberry Pi. Now I ordered a couple extra pieces for this for mine uh, because of the setup that I'm going to have. If you've been watching my previous videos, you know how that's going to go down. And I also got some new coolant. Not, I got some coolant that came with the uh, Mod My Mods kit, but I also got some better coolant. And I'll show you exactly what that is, and I really like it. I think it looks really good. So I'm going to go over. I got a little excited, and I kind of sort of put some stuff together. Um, so you'll get an idea what it looks like when it's assembled. Uh, I, I know, I couldn't wait. <laughs> I, I got a little ambitious here. But I will show you basically what there is. So we start off with is the what I have for the Raspberry Pi. It is currently in a nice acrylic case. And I took this with me on a Christmas vacation to my cousin's house. And I loaded up with uh, a, an external USB drive. I had a virtual fireplace with some Christmas music and uh, loaded up Cody. You know what? This thing works really well. It takes up practically no room. It's a great device. But I kind of want to go above and beyond and overboard with this thing, and that's what we're getting into this water cooling kit for. So let's go into what came with the kit. And in no particular order, as usual, we have it is literally just a round, clear container of coolant. Totally odorless. I obviously wouldn't tell you to taste that, that's kind of gross. But yeah, no labeling on the bottle. I don't remember the exact capacity. Uh, and the bottle's not labeled. I'd have to go back to the uh, actual listing and look it up. But it's enough for about one fill for the complete system. Uh, it won't allow you to do a refill, but you could probably top it off. You might have just a little bit left over. But with that, and I'll leave the good coolant for last. I want to show you what, what else was in this package. So here is the fully assembled dual fan push-pull configuration. I believe these were 60 millimeter fans and they each run off of a three connector plug. On this side are two compression fittings that go into a 100% uh, copper core radiator. So everything inside the radiator is copper, which is really nice to know. It's not aluminum. It's a good thing it's copper. Uh, all the way out onto the threads. Um, I just kind of I tightened everything on here uh, as tight as it should be. And all I have to do is take off these uh, compression fitting ends and slip the hose on, tighten the fittings down, and I'm good to go as soon as I have it measured out where I need. These are the original blue caps that were stuck in the radiator. I left them on here so that the system is sealed until I'm ready to actually fill it. So these fans are currently in a, uh, a push pull configuration so the air is going to flow this way and I did that specifically so that you could see the lines coming out of the front and I'll bend them around like this in front of uh, like the screen and the uh, actual Raspberry Pi board and whatnot but you'll be able to see them come out. I want to be able to actually see that connection in as much of the tubes as possible. While the fan doesn't blow the air at you, it pulls the air away from you and out the back. Completely intentional. It's not really heavy, but it is, as you can probably tell, it's, it's fairly large. So finding a way to mount this uh, on my new rig, however I'm going to design that, is going to be a bit of a challenge as there's no actual mounting points left. Um, I may be able to fudge something by taking out these longer screws here, putting in a short one to go from the fan to the base on the, the radiator, and then take something from here with another short screw onto whatever material I'm going to use to mount this so it can actually hold on by the fan. I'm still thinking about it. I may or may not do it that way. Um, it'll be weeks of planning before I actually start building something, but it will be coming. So let's move on. We have the reservoir, the block, and a ceramic pump down here. Um, I should have maybe left off the pump, 
Um, I did want to show you that it is ceramic and that the ceramic, whatever you call it, the spindle, <laughs> it's the closest thing I could think of, um, actually pulls completely off. So if you do get gunk in here, you can clean out all of the exposed crevices of the pump, including the actual fins. And it's literally just a magnet. So it just drops back on, holds itself in, and it works. On here, the way that this flows, and you'll notice that if this was an input and this is an output, it'll come in here, it'll swirl around this direction, and it'll be forced out here. So if you're offset, the one in the corner, this is going to be your output. Now the way I have this set up is not to come in down here, but to actually come in through the top and refill into the reservoir, pull down into the center here, and then back out the output. I can change these two around. I figured that nothing would circulate in here, or at least not enough, if it didn't actually get filled from here. So it'll take the largest path. So as much of this as it can keep moving, the better. Just the way I see it, and you'll be able to tell with a little bit of turbulence that the system's on, because I'm not gonna put a flow indicator on this, at least not yet, I haven't found a really nice one. The top here, I can show you this one. This top is completely plastic, does have a rubber o-ring on it, and I'll tell you the build quality of this piece, look at that. You see how it shines, it's completely clear. This is amazing quality. I actually, I was really, really impressed when I got it. So with that, plug this guy up and we're here. Now we have a bag of goodies. Now this is a bunch of things, and this is also a little bit of what was left over. I didn't keep the bags from everything, but I'll explain uh, what these breakout blocks are here in just a second. Now the rest of what's in here is just like an Allen wrench. Uh, I will show you these guys right here. Okay. So, let me start with these. These are the water cooling blocks that will go on the various components on the Raspberry Pi and on the screen that I'm gonna get. So the Raspberry Pi actually has three that it can use. There's two on the top, and as you can tell here, one underneath. And on the back of the screen, is another one. So that's four in total. Now I decided to get an additional three of these. The kit comes with one. I said to get an additional three so that all of the chips can be covered whether or not they really need to be cooled. I figured if it's a chip, if we're going to the extreme with this thing, let's just do it, right? I'm gonna do it anyway. Might as well get it done. So I have four of these. Now for these guys, these are breakout blocks. Uh, whatever name you wanna call them, I call them breakout blocks. That's basically exactly what they do. So it is a completely hollow block, front to back. There's a hole that goes all the way through like this. One side has got a stopper in it. The other side has a compression fitting. So liquid will come in. In this case, we'll use this as an example. Liquid will come in and it'll come out through any of these that aren't capped off. Now these do have little tiny rubber caps that are used to cover any of these ports that I do not end up using. Now, I have thought about this a little bit and I'll find out from testing exactly what method works the best, but my plan is that since I have four blocks, I'm gonna have the large tube feeding in but rather than suddenly bottlenecking and throwing a whole bunch of pressure and all that stuff through one small diameter hose through block to block to block in a chain, we're gonna do each block individually. Now since there's five on here, I'll have one capped, which will probably be the center just because it looks. The other four will simply go, for example, one, one output to a block to the input on the next and then out the big two. 
Now instead of daisy chaining them, each one goes to a block and comes back to here. We're not doing one out to block to block to block to block and then back. So each one is going to get its own set. So out of here will be four tubes going to four independent blocks coming back into the four inputs. It's that simple. And that will open up more flow because you allow more paths for the coolant to, to take. So there's not so much of a bottleneck here. Less strain on the pump, more free flowing. It might work better, it might not. I'll also try daisy chaining them and go from block to block and then I'll take temperature readings and we'll see how that works. I'll see whatever the best setup is, but that's probably how I'm going to do it on this. Very well machined blocks. Uh, there was a little bit of gunk in, in here from where uh, it had been, uh, what do you call it, where they made the threads on the inside of the block and then put these copper uh, barb fittings in. Um, so I've cleaned all that out with a pick. Everything seems to be good. But as always, if you're familiar with liquid cooling systems, you want to flush the system first. I'm going to be using distilled water. And you want to flush it mostly because you need to get all of the contaminants and loose particles out of the system. You don't want anything building up. Like if you get something built up inside your block, good luck getting it back out. That's probably not going to happen. And it's a really small inset here, so may as well just buy another block. I was considering going to a copper block, but it came with a nickel. I wanted it all to look right, so I just got three more of the nickel coated blocks, and we're going to leave it at that. Moving on, we have come on, a wiring harness. So this takes three of these three pin connectors to a single connector that will be used to su supply power to both fans and the pump. Those are both, all three of those are 12 volt. And before, I'm sure someone's going to ask, so I might as well make this clear. Despite the fact that these fan blades look colored, they are not LED lit. They are somewhat translucent. Um, and I'm sure if you hit them with the right wavelength, maybe even black light, that they'll light up. In fact, I have both a regular flashlight here and an LED UV light here. So let's take a look on video real quick. They're kind of purple. They don't really light up all that well. It kind of bounces off, especially with a bright light. Let's take a UV light. Yeah. Now look at that. Ooh, it kind of messes with my eyes. <laughs> Not sure how well it's going to show up on video, but that is cool looking. Ooh, I might even put some new batteries in this, but you know what? I think, and I am going to have this lit with UV, and I'll explain why. I think I may have just found another mod to add to this thing. This is going to be a fun project. Okay. So let's continue on. We now have two feet of small tubing. This is, uh, what do you think here? Three millimeter inside diameter, five millimeter outside diameter. Two feet of this stuff. Pretty good. The only thing, and I'm, I'm just picky on this, ignore me, is that it has writing on the tube. I don't think I can get that off even with isopropyl alcohol. I wish I could. Um, I think it looks a little tacky and not as clean as I would like to have all that writing on. Now, on the plus side, the writing is only maybe the first eight inches, seven inches of the tube. All the rest of the tube here is completely clear. So we'll see how this works out, but I'd rather not have the writing on there. It just doesn't look as clean to me. Next, we have the larger tubing. And if you compare that to the smaller, so you get a size comparison here. Okay. This larger tubing 
if I remember right, is eight millimeter inside diameter, 11 millimeter outside diameter. For some reason, I was picturing thicker tubing. Whatever. Uh, and again, this has some writing on it. It's like this portion of the tube is clear and we get down to about halfway or so. And between here and here, and you can see we're this close to the end. So right in the middle seems to have a little bit. I think I might use this and kind of tuck it away. You may not even see it, and I'll explain why, with the very last component here. And that is, after talking with uh, Joe from Mod My Mods, I had a lot of questions, and I finally settled on this stuff. So this is Primo Chill's ice. This is not the view. The view apparently will not work with this system. Uh, it contains titanium dioxide, which is not going to work for the ceramic pump. I would have loved to use it, but I will maybe build a different system, get a different pump down the road. I don't know. I'd like the view. I think it would have looked really cool in this system, especially with a slightly slower flow rate. But you know what? This stuff will work just as well. Now, if you compare the size of what I got to this monstrous 32 ounce, look at that. Yeah, it's not even, it's not even close. So this will fill the system once. This will probably fill it three times. And there's quite a bit in here. So here's what I was saying. This is UV reactive green. If you look at it this way, I'll take a flashlight. If you use a regular light, it's fairly transparent. In fact, you can light it from the bottom and it lights up the whole tube, all the way up to the top. Now that looks, that looks all well and good, but that's just a regular light. I wanted something that would appear more opaque when you put it against UV. Now this may work with a bunch of other fluids, but it just so happened to work with this one almost exactly as I wanted it. With our trusty UV light. And look at that. It is now not transparent. It is much darker. In fact, there we go. It's now much brighter, much cleaner. As you can tell, even with the light shining up from the bottom, you can't even really see all the way up to here. Now, I know that the cell phone camera doesn't really do this justice, but it is almost 100% opaque. Basically it is. It looks kind of like slime, in fact. It's pretty cool looking. So, yeah. Uh, maybe I can show you this way. In fact, this light is so bright, I don't think this camera is going to be able to take it. <laughs> there you go. You can kind of see it. But yeah, this stuff is going to look sweet. This was, I believe, 20... No, this one was $16. And I'd originally thought about getting one that was more of like a... A really bright cobalt blue sort of but I kind of ended up settling on this one I know green is kind of like the go-to for uh, PC guys it gives the alien feel the real powerful you know and it works I mean I'm, I'm honestly happy with it this will last me a while if I need to clean and redo the system I can put the exact same thing back in it yes I am aware that it can stain the tubing and I'm okay with that. I can get this tubing just as much as I want here. I'm going to use what I have. Obviously, it came with a kit. Uh, Micro Center here locally also sells pretty much every component I could need, including compression fittings, rotation fittings, PETG, uh, bending kits, you name it. They sell pretty much everything. So if I need anything, I will definitely be heading there. So, yeah. This little guy is about to get an upgrade. How soon? Couldn't really tell you. 
I need to buy the screen. I need to make independent power supplies, both 12 volt and 5 volt. And I am going to be doing a lot of custom wiring to get those to work together. I don't want to have a whole bunch of things that you have to plug into the wall and then run back to the PC setup that I'm going to make. I want one thing to plug in to the wall, which plugs into the back of the Raspberry Pi rig in its entirety. And from there, it splits out and goes to a 12 volt, uh, 12 volt board and a 5 volt board. And each of those powers specific things independently. So in this case, I'm going to have a 5 volt 3 amp power supply, which is actually what I'm running this on right now which I bought there, I'm actually going to disassemble it, take the circuit board out, and custom wire it in. 3 amp will allow me to overclock and do just fine, which I will be overclocking. So yeah, that ought to work perfect for this. If I need more, I can buy more, but 3 amp should be fine. The 12 volt is going to be, what I'm currently looking at is a 7 amp board, and that'll provide more than enough to do the screen, both fans and the pump. Now, I also have to decide how much UV LEDs I'm going to put on the system to light up things like this, uh, depending on how I want to make the frame. If I 3D print it out of UV reactive material, that'll be that. So it's going to be a toss up. But overall, this is going to be a long project work in progress. I will update you guys as often as I get to another milestone, and we're going to see how this thing turns out. This is going to be pretty cool, and it will slowly be upgraded over time. So its first revision may not necessarily be its last. If I get requests, I will probably put together a kit of some kind and sell the kit, and you can do this to your Raspberry Pi, hopefully. So with that, that's all I've got for tonight. Like, share, and subscribe, guys, and I will see you guys in another video. Thanks for watching.